next two things we want to cover is method invocation and then class declaration. So let's look at method invocation. Method invocation has a lot of parentheses, but we have to kind of parse them to the code, the generated code helps as well. So what are we doing? Whenever we're calling a method, we need to dereference the object and then we need to dereference the fields because the field is another function. We need to dereference de that. And then we need to translate basically all the parameters and we need to add the this again. And the gist, that's what we're doing. Or that's the gist of what we're doing. So let's, let's kind of un unpeel what's going on here. So the outermost thing is going to be a function call. Right? And it's this whole thing right here. So we need to look up a function. So I think in the generated code, it kind of becomes more obvious. Oh, what, what did I do? Just refresh the code. So um, we have outermost function application, right? And then what is the function? The function is one thing, which is highlighted in blue. Outermost, a get field, which is corresponds to this whole thing. Get field of code. So code is here. Okay, so what is the object that we're getting? The object is going to be this whole thing in blue. Okay, so now what do we see? We see outermost a deref. Outermost is a deref. And then inside, what do we have? We have this. So I have a get field. And then inside of the get field, what is the object that we do get the field from is the deref. So we do deref of p1, because p1 is the parameter here. We have, have to convert p1, which is the source language variable, to the target language variable p1. Okay, and um, one thing I will try to do is kind of break this down into multiple lets, just so it, it's a bit more obvious. But this is without le lets, which means it's generating less code. But if you look at the generated code, it kind of makes it more obvious what is being generated. So one thing that we, we should note is in JavaScript, there's also the notion of function call. You won't have to generate the code for that, but for the sake of completeness, I wanted to cover it. And one very interesting, well, very interesting subtlety for me at least, is how function calls work in JavaScript. So in JavaScript, the following code highlighted in blue is different. So that is to say, if you do object.bar and in parentheses is different than if you do object.bar parentheses around that and then call it, okay? Um, why is that? Because the language distinguishes between a method call and a function call. And looking up and doing this is a method call. It's not a function call. So a function call is something else. Function call is when you look up something and you store it somewhere, and now you have a function. And what that means is that the this changes. You know, when you call a function, the this is always the function or the object this, right? Uh, but if you call a function, the this becomes window, a special variable, a global variable called window that exists for browsers. It represents the, the page. So this is kind of confusing, but if you look at the um, difference between method invocation and and um, function call, the only thing you will see that is different is that the parameter here, where is x that is being passed, is no longer x that you look up because you just have a function. You don't know which object to look up, which means you need to assign it to window. So that this kind of changes which is very subtle. And you have two examples that explain uh, the difference that I recommend you try to write it in your browser and, and run it. Okay, so, but we're not gonna cover function call. It's just to say that function calls in Racket or in Racket in JavaScript, they're, they're different from method invocations and you have to be careful um, in using them. So you cannot just pass a method of, of, um, of an object and treat it as if it were a function 
because it lacks the it 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 becomes unbounded to the object. It doesn't know what is the object assigned to it anymore. And you, when you call it, you call it a method as if it were a function. You lose the this, which is very a very subtle bug. So here is an example, right? If you write foo dot bar and you call the method bar, it's not use it's not calling a method bar. It's calling the function that you defined in the class but where this is window, right? So in this example, this.x doesn't exist because it's not defined in your um, window object, which represents the global setting of, of the browser. It's kind of it's very subtle and confusing as well. So whereas here it would work because it's looking up func method bar, what it's doing is just incrementing x, and x is defined in foo. So when you do foo.bar and you call it, it increments x. So this works as you would expect, but this does not work because once you assign the method foo to a, uh, the method bar to a variable, you lose the this, and therefore, when you call bar, it's set to the global window, and the window doesn't have x. So now let's finally look at class declaration. Class declaration generates this whole bunch of code, and I'm going to go through it slowly, but really the way to understand it is you have to you have to do it step by step, and basically you have to do lots of lets and assignments and and let's let's try to explain what's going on. So what do we need to do? First thing we need to do is we need to look up the parent. The parent is going to be possibly another function, right? So you need to translate that. Um, once you translate that, you get a parent. Actually, this should be J not C. I don't know why this is called C. Um, so when you translate you get parent here and then what you need to do you need to create the new prototype and this this whole trick here is just to create a prototype. So you have a let, you create an empty object, so this is how you create an, an empty object and you set the prototype to the parent. And this is that bug that we talked about in a previous lecture where you cannot just copy the reference, you have to create a new object with underscore underscore proto and assign it to the prototype if you want if you are extending it otherwise you would be mutating the parent class which you don't want to do so next what you do you create um, you instantiate the the um, the prototype so that's just creating the that prototype object the object with just the underscore underscore proto thing and then it's available in proto Next, what you have, you have another let. What is that let? You you are creating just a function, a JavaScript function, and then oh, okay, I remember what we're doing. Okay, we need to translate this whole thing then. So this is just syntactic sugar. Oh, you're actually not going to do this in the home because this is for for desugaring, which we're not going to be doing in homework eight anymore. Um, so let me explain why there's a C now. Okay, now I understand. So C is for desugaring, which is a homework eight. Um, it was supposed to be a homework eight exercise, but because of lack of time, we're not going to do that. And it's just to show you how to represent uh, what is usually done by polyfill tools, which are JavaScript tools that kind of make newer features of JavaScript available to older browsers. And the way you do this is by generating code. You generate simpler JavaScript. So how do you do that? So for instance, if you have a class extends, um, this function C is just generating simpler JavaScript. So, and actually here we're generating simple JS. So it's just saying that you can represent a class in terms of functions, as we saw before in the examples. And this is just the code being translated. But because you're not gonna cover it, I'm not gonna spend too much time on it. So essentially what we're doing is, in this whole code in purple, first highlighted in blue now, is just declaring an empty object and assigning the parent whatever you're extending to it. And then when you're done with that, what you need to do is you need to create the function and you assign the prototype to be that thing in purple. And then what you need to do is you need to go through the body and the body can have three, two kinds of things, right? It has to have at least one constructor and that's what this body thing is trying to explain here. It's saying that you have at least one constructor and then 
it's followed by n number of methods. And each method should just be translated as assigning proto m. You know, you have your the prototype that you just looked up from the class, uh, which is a function. And then you assign for each field, for each method that you define, you assign it to the variable. And this, it's very, um, if you recall how we, how we, sh I showed side by side the original JavaScript code with class and then the function that we just set the, the fields, prototype dot something, prototype plus, that's exactly what, what's being generated here. But you would, you are able to do this in SimpleJS as well. Uh, and actually it was one of the homework assignments that I would like you to do, but for now we don't have time, so we won't, we won't do it this semester. Um, but just, just rest assured that it is very possible to do and quite actually not that difficult. So that's how you generate um, the code when you get a class, generate just functions. It's a basic idea. Um, and that's basically it. I hope you have fun with homework eight.